Canada's Temporary Foreign Worker Program was launched in 1973. It was advertised as a channel for bringing rare, highly skilled talent into the country. But it was used more often to recruit low-paid workers, and there were many stories of worker abuse. After 2005, under the Stephen Harper Conservatives, the number of migrant workers grew quickly. By 2012, there were 200,000 people entering Canada every year, in sectors ranging from banking to fast food to heavy industry and mining. The International Union of Operating Engineers decided to blow the whistle when the federal government agreed to admit 200 Chinese miners for work in Northeast BC. The employer, HD Mining, said it could not find any qualified coal miners in Canada. Taking HD Mining to court was a major action that we took on behalf of our own members and Canadian workers as a whole. It was clear that the temporary foreign workers program was out of control. This case was especially outrageous. The employer had no justification for not hiring Canadians. They said it was a specialized mining process and they had to bring people from China. That didn't make any sense. We had lots of experienced Canadians who could adapt to these conditions. The federal government gave HD Mining a permit to bring in the Chinese workers. The operating engineers and the Labor's International Union responded by applying to the federal court for a judicial review of the permitting decision. The court process turned out to be difficult and we ran into many obstacles. The proposed mine is located near Tumbler Ridge. And HD the company and the government of Canada argued that unions had no right to bring this motion to court. The judge ruled that we had a direct interest because we represent miners and we did have the right to be there. Then we went after the documents. We wanted to find out if the company had made a legitimate attempt to hire Canadians. After a series of legal arguments, we won the right to see the job applications. HD Miney had 300 resumes in their file and a lot of those applicants were qualified, except that they didn't speak Mandarin. The company really wanted to use Chinese speaking workers. They dug in on this issue. They said it would take 10 years to train a Canadian workforce for that mine. It's beyond belief that you cannot train somebody to work underground in four and a half years, particularly when all over the U.S. where the majority of mining is long wall mining, there's courses for 240 hours that give you the ability to go underground and start working underground. While we were in court through the first part of 2013, public interest in the temporary foreign worker story continued to rise. The CBC ran a long series on temporary foreign workers. They flew reporters to China to talk to job recruiters. It turned out that the Royal Bank was also bringing people into Canada, and we became part of that story. We met with the bank to share our views. It was the power of our pension plan that persuaded the CEO of the Royal Bank to fly to BC for a meeting. We told them that we were determined to protect the rights of all Canadian workers to have the first shots at jobs in this country. In the HD Mining case, the federal court ruled in favor of the company. The judge said that the federal government official who issued the work permits was acting in accordance with the regulations that were in place in 2012. And that's all that the judge wanted to consider. Following a months-long court battle, HD Mining got the news it had been hoping for. The Federal Court of Canada has dismissed union challenges against the company, hiring more than 200 temporary foreign workers from China. We ultimately lost the case, but we gained significant changes in the temporary foreign worker program. That's because the controversy we helped to create put severe pressure on the federal government. Under the changes, employers are not allowed to bring foreign workers into industries with high unemployment. They're not allowed to pay foreign workers less than Canadian workers. They have to pay more to enter the program and the application review process has a greater scrutiny. The flood of temporary foreign workers was reversed. Within a couple of years, the numbers coming into Canada dropped by half. Also, for the first time, we got a ruling that trade unions have the right to stand in the federal court and challenge temporary foreign worker program decisions. We didn't get exactly what we wanted, but we helped to push public opinion and we made a difference. We got overwhelming support from our members and from people across the country. It's a core principle in our union that Canadian jobs should go to Canadians. We presented evidence that this company wanted to pay the Chinese miners far less than Canadian workers were making for the same work. We fought that fight to advance the interests of our members and all Canadians, which we continue to do. In the HD Mining case, we proved that unions are relevant 
and can make changes when we raise our voices. HD Mining's Northeast BC coal mine has never gone into operation, but it is ready to open if market conditions improve. The company has even constructed housing in the town of Tumbler Ridge for its proposed Chinese workforce. However, if HD Mining wants to bring foreign workers into Canada, it will face a challenge. Thanks to the work of the operating engineers and the Laborers International, the rules for the temporary foreign worker program were changed. The HD mining case and the controversy it caused in the media and in Parliament showed strong public support for the principle that jobs in Canada should go to qualified Canadian workers. Canada's unions are ready to keep fighting for that principle.